Hello, this is the first video uh, corresponding to the seminar sessions of e and EM 280. In this video I'm going to cover Ohm's law, resistors in series, and resistors in parallel. So we're going to start with Ohm's law. Let's consider we have a resistor R and let's say that we have some current flowing through R and we're going to call this current I. Let's assume that we have a voltage across the terminals of R that is equal to V, V volts. So Ohm's law basically says that the voltage V across a resistor is proportional to the current. So V can be computed as I times R, where R is the value of the resistance of R. So let's solve a simple example. Let's say we have one source that is providing one volt and that source is connected to a 10 ohm resistor. Let's assume that we have a current I flowing in the circuit. So we can find the current I by applying Ohm's law to the resistor R. We can just find I by taking the voltage V, in this case 1 volt, and dividing it by the value of the resistance, in this case 10 ohm and we get 0.1 out. We can also find the rate of energy being dissipated by the resistor. In other words, the power. There is a general formula to compute the power dissipated by a resistor, and we can just compute it by multiplying the voltage across the terminals times the current that is flowing through it. In these examples, the V is just 1 volt, and the current is 0.1 amp. So when we multiply voltage time current, we get 0.1 watt. And that's the power being dissipated by the resistor. There are different ways in which we can calculate the power in terms of the voltage or in terms of the resistance. So you can see we can compute the power as V squared divided by R, or we can compute the power as I squared times R. Sometimes we can find the voltage and that's enough if we know the value of the, of the resistance to find the power. Or sometimes we know the current, and if we know the resistance, then we can find the power as well. Let's now consider more than one resistor, resistors in series. When we have resistors connected in series, like R1 and R2 in this diagram, let's say we have a current flowing through this system, some current I. When we have resistors in series, the same current flowing through R1 is going to be the same current flowing through R2 is going to be the same current that is going back to the rest of the circuit. We can simplify the circuit by computing an equivalent resistance. And in this case, when we have resistors connected in series, the equivalent resistance is just the summation of the values of the resistance. So we can replace the original circuit with two resistors with just one circuit with one resistance and the value of that resistance is the summation of the two and we're going to have the same current I flowing in the equivalent circuit so let's solve an example about this let's assume we have a 10 volt source that is connected to two resistors in series 20 ohm and 30 ohm resistors we can compute the current flowing in the circuit by first simplifying the circuit finding the equivalent resistance. And in this case it's very simple. It's just a summation of 20 ohms plus 30 ohms and that's going to give us a, a, an equivalent resistance of 50 ohms. Now that we have simplified the circuit, we only have one source and one resistor, we can easily apply Ohm's law to find the current. And in this case, it's the voltage V provided by the source, 10 volts, divided by the equivalent resistance, 50 ohm, and we get 0.2 amps. Now we can also find the voltage across each individual resistor, because we know that the same current that is flowing through the 20 ohm resistor is exactly the same as the current flowing through the 30 ohm resistor. So if we multiply the current by the value of each resistor, we're going to get the voltage across the terminals of each one. In this case, we have 4 volts being dropped across the 20 ohm resistor, 
and six volts being dropped across the 30 ohm resistor. We can also find the power dissipated by each resistor since we know the current and now we already know the voltage. So we can just apply the general formula to find the power dissipated by each resistor, multiplying the voltage times the current, and for the 20 ohm resistor we get 0.8 watt, and for the 30 ohm resistor we get 1.2 watt. We can also find the power provided by the source, and I'm going to call that power PS. The power PS is the power, the total power being provided to the circuit by the voltage source. And we can find it by multiplying the voltage the source is providing times the current it is providing to the circuit. In this case, the voltage of the source is 2 volts and the total current it is providing is 0.2 amps. So if we multiply 10 volts times 0.2 amps, we get 2 watts. And as you can see here, the total power provided by the source is exactly equal to the summation of the power dissipated by the 20 ohm resistor plus the power dissipated by the 30 ohm resistor. This basically means that the total power provided to the circuit is equal to all the power dissipated in the circuit. So we're not losing energy and we're not creating energy. All the power provided to the circuit is being dissipated. We can also connect resistors in parallel. Like in the diagram, R1 and R2 are connected in parallel. When we now we have the total current I is going to be split up in two. Part of this flow of charges is going to flow through R1, and I'm going to call this I1, and the rest is going to flow through R2, and I'm going to call this I2. So now the currents might be different, as opposed to the case when we have resistors connected in series, where the current was the same. In this case, the current flowing through R1 need not be the same as the current flowing through R2. However, the voltage across R1 is exactly the same as the voltage across R2. We can now find an equivalent resistance for this and replace the circuit with just one resistance. And we can find for this case with two resistors the equivalent resistance using this formula. So now the circuit has just one resistor and the value of its resistance is R equivalent and the total current flowing through this resistor is capital I. And the voltage across R equivalent is going to be exactly the same V. If we have more than two resistors connected in parallel, like for example N resistors connected in parallel, we can use this formula to compute the equivalent resistance. If we have three, then we just have to sum 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, and then compute the inverse of that, and that's going to give us the value of the equivalent resistance. Let's solve a simple example of this. Let's say we have a circuit like this with a source providing 2 volts and 2 resistors connected in parallel, a 5 ohm resistor and a 10 ohm resistor. Let's find the total current I and the current flowing through each individual resistor, I1 and I2, as shown in the diagram. So the first thing here is we can simplify the circuit by computing the equivalent resistance. So we have the same source, 2 volts, providing current I, but now we replaced the two resistors in parallel with just one equivalent resistance. And the value of this resistance was calculated using the formula provided before. In this case, the value is 3.33 ohm. So with this circuit, we now can compute the current I by applying Ohm's law just taking 2 volts and dividing it by the value of the equivalent resistance. The value we get is 0.6 amps. Now, in order to find each individual current, I1 and I2, there is something we need to note first. The 5 ohm resistor and the 10 ohm resistor, they are connected in parallel. 
That basically means that the voltage drop across each one is the same. So the voltage drop B5 is the voltage across the 5 ohm resistor is exactly the same as the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor and in this case is exactly the same as the voltage provided by the source, 2 volts. Since we know the voltage across each resistor and we know the value of each resistance, we can apply ohm's law to each individual resistor to get the current. So for I1, we just divide the voltage across the 5 ohm resistor divided by 5 and we get 0.4 amps. And similarly for the other resistor, the 10 ohm resistor, we just take the 2 volts across its terminals and divide by the value of its resistance and we get 0.2 amps. Something to note here is we can check this result with Kirchhoff current law. The total current I that we got before was 0.6 amp. And that has to be exactly equal to the summation of I1, which is 0.4 amps, and I2, which is 0.2 amps.